Hey and welcome to this video. Um, this is the third video I've made recently about uh, failovers. Um, this time we're going to use recursive routing. Uh, you may have seen my other videos where I refer to them as my uh, ultimate. Um, they are more complex, there's scripts involved, there's schedulers, Netwatch. Um, but I find them by ultimate because it means they're a bit more scalable. They use a script so you can adjust parameters, you can change you know, you could make it even more complex in terms of the failover triggering. But um, this is another really good way if you want to just have a quick um, failover scenario. Um, it basically, not tricks, but it makes the router think that we've got direct connections to these public IP. But in fact, they are, um, we're routing across the internet across the two links. So um, if you're not um, familiar with recursive routing, uh, it's basically, uh, it aids seamless fade over, um, the smooth transitions between the um, connections. Uh, it's a simple file configuration, which you'll see compared to my other ones I did. Um, it provides network resilience, uh, and it helps keeps you know your traffic um, hidden to the internet um, with minimal interruption. I will just say in this, there is some latency in the terms of the failover, which you'll see. Um, Again, you'll, uh, you'll, from my other video, you'll be able to tweak those times with this one and not, not so easy to do. But uh, yeah, let's just jump on the, um, have a look at how we're gonna use the recursive routing. So I put together this article on my website, um, it basically just goes through what recursive routing is and then in terms of the micro So we've got um, these scopes and these target scopes. So these are gonna be important for us uh, to work efficiently with this. Um, Basically, every time you uh, create a route, um, it's going to be with a scope value default of 30. Now, to make the router think that it's directly connected, we're going to use 10, and you'll see this more clearly when I come to it. And then this target scope is then also important because this then uh, indicates the depth of the recursive um, allowed for the route. So the higher value um, allows for... Uh, the recursive lookups to happen, which again, I'll, I'll, we'll go through once we do some configuring. So let's jump on our microstick. So this is basically just one I've used before um, for those other videos. I've got this LAN connection here, which is the PC that I'm sitting on. And I've got two connections. One is a PPPoE and one is a static um, IP address. One's on Ether1, one. this one PPPoE is on, on Ether2. Um, and then that's about it. So when it comes to the routing, I've got static routes configured uh, for both of these. Um, this PPPoE would be giving me one dynamically. However, in the uh, interface, what I've done is I've just unticked the box to add default route because we need to do this via static routes. Um, so that's another of the obviously the drawbacks. But I do have a, a workaround when it comes to dy some dynamic routes or some dynamic. Uh, interfaces so i'll go through that afterwards but for now what we're going to do is we will just delete these two now i have a separate uh, connection to this pc so um i'm not routing for me to get to this pc i'm not routing but for this pc to route the internet uh it's obviously going to go through this market so hence i can just delete default gateways without worrying about losing access so that's obviously something to always be mindful of so what we're going to do is we're going to create two static routes and these are going to point to Google's DNS primary and Google's secondary DNS. Now I've chosen to use these because um, if I was to use um, say one of these as my DNS server we're going to on the microtech it's going to at some point lose access to that so I don't want to affect any DNS lookups so if this the way I could then use Cloudflare for example one 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 without then affecting these so these are just so basically i'm saying i'm not going to use google ds for this and you can be fairly confident that google dns servers are going to be reachable um across the internet rather than you know picking something that could go offline and then cause you to fail over because that's what effectively we're going to do we're going to if we can't get to these ip addresses on each of these links then that's going to tell the router that not to use them um so then we're getting points. So this is our primary. So we're going to point that to our gateway. 
And then this is going to be our PPP gateway. Uh, 64.7.1. Okay, now for the scope, this is where we need to alter that value. We're going to just hit, um, by default, like I said, it'd be 30. So we're going to go for 10 on each one. Okay, and then we leave the rest as it is. So click OK and OK. There we go. So now we're telling the router to get to these routes, to get to these, the IP, sorry, we go out of these different interfaces, which is fairly straightforward. But because we set them to 10 as the um, uh, scope, they're going to be treated like they're um, dynamic routes. Sorry, they're, like they're directly connected routes. Because you can't obviously have your next hop gateway as a an IP address that isn't um, directly accessible from the, the router. That's, hence your next hop has to be your neighbor. So now we're going to head and add our catch all routes, our default gateways. Um, and again, now this time we're going to point them, as I just mentioned, we can't normally do this, but we're going to point them at the public IP addresses because it's now going to think that they are locally uh, accessible routes. The scope we will be 30 for both of them because they're going to be our normal static routes but this is where the target scope comes in so this set those both to 11 this time which is, which is one up from the default which is 10 okay now the one other thing we're going to do is use this check gateway feature now what this does is this will ping this IP uh, periodically every 10 seconds and should it fail I think if it fails twice for memory I'd have to look that up um, it will basically say this route is not usable, so um, it will go unreachable. Now we couldn't, if this was just pointing, if we were using this check gateway feature on our normal static route pointing to our gateway, so our next hop, we're relying on that next hop to go offline, so that IP to go offline, so that interface to shut down for the link between the two routes to go down. Whereas we want to test, we could have them between us and the internet, so across the ISPs network, there could be a problem on their network. We're not going to trigger a failover. So assuming that we've got two different ISPs, we've got two different types of network, one could be a wireless, 4G, LTE, sorry, um, Starlink, something like that. And our primary would be our MBN, our ADSL, broadband, whatever it is, our dedicated fiber. So that's the one we want to primarily use. We only want to use the other one, but they're two separate mediums, if that makes sense. Um, so we couldn't just use that. Well, you can just use that ping feature, but it wouldn't really, it's not an efficient way of um, causing an internet failover, if you like. So, uh, but by this way, we're going to trigger it when it hits the, um, uh, when these two light goes off, one of these goes offline, sorry. So we just okay that and okay that. I'll just show you if I set this one, for example, back to the default 10. There you go. It doesn't, it's not no longer reachable. We just have to, and I believe prior to route with OS 7, this wasn't a thing. I'd have to double check that, but I seem to remember not having to do this, um, in earlier versions of router OS, but like I said, that was a few years ago now. So, um, okay, so the only thing else we need to do is set this one to distance of two, because this is our backup. If we jump on our machine, we can do a trace route to Cloudflare DNS. There we go, so we're routing out the primary. All good. So, if we then bring up a terminal here and we start pinging that IP. Now what I'm going to do on my upscale route, so this is connected to a dev router on the stream, so I'm going to break the connection further up, basically blocking the connection out on that network. So if I down that, and you can see we can now no longer, longer ping 8.8.8.8. So that would mean that we couldn't use that as our DNS server because we wouldn't be able to resolve DNS. But um, so it's basically going to wait 10 seconds. And then eventually this route here should go uh, unreachable. The problem is if you wet, yeah, there we go. So it's 10 seconds, not necessarily from when it goes offline. So you could have just missed the, the period when it's going to check. So there we are. we're offline. Let's just confirm with our trace route where we're going now. There you go, we're going out the other interface. Just get the ping running. All good, so we're pinging. Well, now what we'll do, I will just re enable that and fix that connection. 
instantly we can ping Google again. And then the file back is pretty much um, is a lot quicker. You can see that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so the one thing I mentioned as well about the dynamic thing, if you see my second, what I entitled ultimate failover um, solution, I was using dynamic interfaces. So I was getting DHCP clients. So on, on this network here, on the uh, this one here, Ether1, I do actually have a DNS, DHCP, sorry, server running. So I will just um, click OK that. There we go. So I've got another round, so it's going to confuse things a bit. But what I'll do is I will remove... Actually, sorry, no, I don't want to default it out. Nope. So it gets rid of that. So I get an IP address. Um, and then in here we have this script function, which basically means that every time something happens to this in the, this, this this client, so if it's enabled, disabled, renewed, or whatever, it's um it will trigger this script, and we want to say like the status bound. It means it's got an IP address. So if it's bound, um, grab the local IP, the gateway IP address, and then the it, um at least it's just logging it into the log into the the logs just for testing. But you get rid of that line. And then this is going to update the route that's called primary check. So what I do is this one is going to be my primary check because this is the one that needs the gateway. So I will um, comment this and call it primary underscore check. Okay. okay. And if I just change that to 11, actually this is going to break. Uh, interesting, it doesn't break, does it? Okay. Well, that's um shouldn't work. It says it's inactive. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that no, has failed. Sorry. Interesting. I can still get to it. it must be uh because I'm failed over. But anyway, so we'll just um so disable. Yep. Code changes and then enable. That should bound. There we go. See, it's updated the IP address. So then that means when if we our ISP is giving us different um, default gateways as well as different IP addresses when we you know reboot or every time our session times out because we were using static routes we can't go in and physically manually update them every time because that's just not practical. So this way we're gonna this means every time we get a new different gateway or our gateway is always going to be updated there. So hopefully that makes sense. So we'll just double check. Always good to test lots of times. We'll just kill that network again. There we go. And then we wait somewhere between 10 to 20 seconds for it to fail over. There we go. And we've failed over. So like I mentioned, it's not instant, um, which is why I've always used the scripting method because it gives you a bit more um, tweaking of you know abilities um but this is just one of the other ways you can do a failover so um yeah hopefully that will make sense if you've got any questions about this um if you've got a different setup to this and you need, need help with that please comment um but other than that thanks for watching um as always always happy to receive comments feedback um like i showed you before i've got a website which i have links to all the videos I make, I do step-by-step -step guides, which have the CLI commands as well as Winbox screenshots, because um, sometimes you watch a video and then you want to go back and just look at a certain bit instead of having to watch the whole video again. Um, you can just go go by the website and get the bits you need. But um, yeah, comment on there, comment on here. Please like, subscribe, um, get to be motivated to make more. Um, and if there's any other particular video you want looking at, uh, yeah, I'll see what I can do, but thanks.